Hello all, welcome to Public Cloud Design Tips and Tricks again. Uh, today's topic is Azure uh, Subnet Delegation. And uh, here in this session, we'll be discussing the fundamentals of network subnet delegation. So before we start this uh, topic, uh, let's recap a little bit. What is a VNet and subnet? So Azure Virtual Network, VNet stands for Virtual Network. Azure Virtual Network is a foundational capability that makes or creates isolated network within Azure. So what it includes, a VNet includes address spaces address spaces is nothing but the ip ranges then within that vnet you have subnets gateways and peering capability okay it helps to communicate across virtual machines azure services and to the internet so it's it's a connectivity between virtual machines uh, pass to pass connectivity and then uh, from azure to internet okay so these are the uh, main uh, uh, features of a uh, virtual network. Uh, now, what is the features of VNet? So, VNet uh, has features like connectivity, security, isolation, segmentation. So, what is connectivity? It provides various connectivity options with various patterns, uh, such as network injection, network isolation, delegations, connectivity to on-prem systems, connectivity to internet, and peering, etc. So, peering is again uh, one VNet is talking to another VNet or communicating to another VNet. So it has an access of the whole IP ranges of the another VNet. So that is the peering. Uh, from a security perspective, it provides various possibilities like uh, network security group creation, application security group creation, Azure firewall, uh, VPN, etc. Uh, so the basic idea of having security uh, within a virtual network is to secure the traffic. Uh, coming inside uh, you know the uh, network boundary and also the traffic going outside the network boundary uh, then isolation so it provides protection to network resources with smart access vlans etc segmentation is again workload can be placed in separate boundary to control and secure the traffic path so this can be achieved through subnets so segmentations means uh, based on your workload uh, what kind of capability you need for example you, you may need an application gateway you may need a virtual machine you may need certain delegated subnets to you know support azure pass services traffic so in in that perspective you have to segment it on the service level traffic uh, to different subnets so that is more uh, network segmentation now, what is a subnet? Subnet enables to segment the virtual network we already discussed based on Azure services and workloads requirement. Okay. Subnet can be assigned to specific set of IP ranges uh, to deploy the resources within it. Uh, the organization can achieve a network segmentation with the splitting of IP addresses space into specific design requirements. So, I have already given the example like application gateway, virtual machines any other pass deletion so you can segment your or you can divide your ip ranges based on your requirement and then you can achieve network segmentation by implementing different subnets it helps to bring efficiency in terms of security and capacity to create an isolation boundary specific to workload so basically your uh, services uh, uh, responsible for a very, very specific purpose will only handle those kind of traffic within that uh, uh, secure boundary uh, that is uh, subnets okay so that um, that is why it uh, helps in bring the efficiency in terms of security now so network security groups can be attached to a subnet based on inbound and outbound requirement and then where you can control the inbound and outbound traffic uh, coming into your workload or going outside the workload now coming to what is a subnet delegation so subnet delegation enables to map or assign a specific subnet or an Azure pass service that needs to be injected into your virtual network. So why do you need to uh, inject to your virtual network? So when you are actually working in an organization, you have your private uh, IP spaces or private IP spaces in the sense you have to create a private network boundary. So you want all the traffic that is coming from a Azure uh, pass services, which is sitting outside your uh, secure boundary those traffic uh, you know can be routed through your private boundary so that you can have a proper traceability of the traffic what it is doing uh, you know 
uh, inside your workload and all this. And that is where uh, network subnet delegation comes into picture. And uh, subnet delegation provides full control to the customer on managing the integration of Azure services into the virtual networks to make the traffic private and secure. So if you see in the diagram, uh, there is a Azure Pass service sitting on the Microsoft public site. And then the traffic is getting originated from an app service and you want to have the traffic routed through your private boundary, which is your private network. And that is where the delegated subnets comes into picture. And that uh, basically provides the network inject capability, a capability where the traffic, uh, you know, routes via the private boundary. Okay. Uh, so, so that is, uh, you know, in a way subnet, subnet delegation in the diagram. So with subnet delegation, uh, subnet delegation, the organization can achieve a complete traceability of the past traffic. Now, delegate a subnet to an Azure service, allow that service to establish some basic network configuration rules of the subnet. Uh, the pre and post deployment conditions of the subnet delegations are, if you're creating a subnet delegation, then past service can be deployed in a dedicated subnet and a network policy each to be added to the subnet to establish the delegation capability okay so establish the delegation capability in terms of connecting that but originated traffic from the past service into your private boundary through that delegated subnet which is your ip address space or private ip spaces for your organization so in short with delegation uh, enabled in the subnet, it allows all traffic originated from the past service will pass through the private network, through the subnet, okay. We also presented in this diagram. So that is, uh, that is uh, subnet delegation. Now what is the benefits uh, of subnet delegation? A network filtering can be established for the traffic, user defined routes you can create, service endpoint or private links can be connected or established from your private private boundary. It establishes a network integration in private domain. It also can be connected to your firewall to audit the network traffic or to have a traceability of what is uh, you know going out or coming in basically. So a VNet, a VNet owner can add the delegation to the past services based on requirement. So you essentially have to have VNet owner owner role uh, to have the delegation established. So what it cannot do. So, so far we discussed what is delegation and what, what it can do. So what it cannot do uh, is Azure services can inject instances into customer subnet but cannot affect the existing workloads. And the policies or routes that these services apply are flexible and overridden by the customer. So that is, uh, these are the two points uh, what a subnet delegation cannot do. Yeah, so it's it's a very simple topic, nothing uh, uh, more complex uh, in this session. So, but subnet delegation fundamental is very important when you are actually creating a network design or a network pattern, uh, especially the private uh, network scenarios. So that is what is subnet delegation. Uh, so if you want to know more about it, I have given a Microsoft link. Please go through it and try to understand the basic fundamental of uh, network subnet delegation. So that's it uh, for the day. Mm, have a good day. Thank you.